Welcome and good afternoon or evening to everyone. We, uh, we are so excited you're able to join us. My name is Bob Kilmer and I'm an education technology advisor and CT advisor for Harbor Freight Tools for Schools. This is our fifth national webinar focused on excellence in skilled trades education, and we're calling it Eight Practical Ways to Use AI in Your CTE or Skilled Trades Classroom. Here at Harbor Freight Tools for Schools, our focus is to lift up excellent skilled trades education and serve as a catalyst to increase understanding and support for this important work. It goes without saying, we have a deep respect for skilled trades and for the intelligence and creativity of the people who work with their hands. We also truly believe that we all get better when we gather together and share best practices. With this in mind, it is my pleasure to introduce my good friend from Seattle, Washington, Jeff Utech. Over the past 13 years, Jeff has been helping schools here in the United States and around the world connect teaching and learning to the digital landscapes we all now live, work, and play in. We all know technology is impacting every part of our lives. We also see and feel in our classrooms and labs that we are educating a generation that is different. They have high expectations and expect their school experiences to be different, and we, they want their learning to match the connected culture we all now live in. We are excited to have Jeff here to take us through this different hands-on AI experience. So let's roll up our sleeves and see if we can get a little bit better together by understanding how we can use this tool in our schools. Jeff, take it away. Hey, Bob, thank you so much for that. Uh, Bob, one of the great CTE teachers of my life that I've had the opportunity to interact with. Uh, so thank you, Bob, for that. I'm so excited to be here on behalf of Harbor Freight Tools for Schools. I really appreciate everybody taking some time out of you. I know what you have is busy schedules. Uh, so I really appreciate you being here. A couple things to get us started. Uh, number one, over in the chat, we're going to be leveraging the chat. You'll notice if you haven't been in a, a Zoom webinar before, uh, you're you're not on the screen and you're all muted. So I can't hear you or see you, uh, which makes it very frustrating as a presenter because I can't see interactions with you, but it's all right. So we're going to be leveraging the chat. Uh, so make sure over in the chat, number one, down there where you type your messages, uh, it should say to everyone. And when you do that, when you says to everyone, that makes sure that we all get to see the messages going back and forth uh, as we're going uh, through this training today. The second thing is, in just a second, I'm going to drop the presentation slides for today's presentation. You are allowed. Here we go. Three, two, one. Uh, you are allowed to take a copy of those. So if you click on that link. If you click on that link, you will be taken over. This is a Google slide deck. If you are in a Google school and you have access to Google Drive and, and you know that you're in a Google school, you can go to file, make a copy of, and take a copy of this and uh, go uh, when you leave here today. If you're in a Microsoft school, you go file, download, and you can download it as a PowerPoint. Uh, so you are allowed to take this, use this, share this with your colleagues, this is my gift uh, to you as we start talking about AI in education. So that's step one. Uh, is, you are welcome, Lisa. Uh, this is my uh, this is uh, my gift to you. And uh, hopefully today we're going to be able to dig in a little bit and talk about AI. Now, uh, it came out before here that hopefully some of you have a ChatGPT account. I know that they sent out, uh, and that is on slide two here, on slide two of the slide deck. We're going to ask that if you already have a chat GPT account, fantastic. You are all good and set to go. Um, if you need to create a chat GPT account, you can go to this link, 321, in the chat now uh, and make sure that you have a link there. Now, if you don't want to sign up for chat GPT, if you're like, Jeff, this is my first time playing with AI. I don't know if I want to give my email address and name to a company uh, not knowing what this stuff does. That's okay. Our backup today, if that's you, I highly recommend using ChatGPT. We'll talk about it in a second. Uh, but just over in the chat, I just shared our free one called Perplexity. Uh, Perplexity.ai runs on ChatGPT. 
great little program and there's no sign in needed. Uh, it won't do, it won't be quite as good as chat GPT because it's running on the, on a different version. Uh, but it's going to do everything that we're going to be playing with today. And so really in this training, this is a hands-on training. I know how much you all uh, love to work with your hands. I love to work with my hands too. Uh, so this is a hands-on training. Uh, what I would highly recommend is that you maybe be looking at the chat. You can actually even take my video and take it off your screen if you want. You don't need to be looking at me. Uh, what I really want you doing is I want you interacting with chat GPT or perplexity. So that's where I want you today because that is where we find the power of this is actually getting people in and playing with this and seeing where this goes. So you don't even need the slide deck if you don't want it. You can just make a copy of it. I will sl uh, share that slide deck again later uh, as we get started here today. But this is going to be a hands-on session and we're going to be looking at eight ways to leverage AI in the CTE classroom. Uh, and in the, in the different trades uh, that we do. So here are the way, eight ways on the screen that you're looking at now. These are, we're gonna go through these here in just a second. Real quick, I'll do a quick introduction about who I am and where, where I come from and why I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, my name is Jeff Udick. I grew up in Spokane, Washington. My dad was an FFA teacher, welding teacher, shop teacher. Uh, what else did he do? He taught floral design. He taught um, uh, greenhouse management back in the day. Uh, my dad retired. Uh, and then uh, they shut down the FFA program in the 80s. Some of you might remember in the 80s when we decided that we didn't need any more CTE programs. And so we uh, did away with a lot of them here in our high school programs. And my dad was one of those. He was a biology teacher to end his career. Uh, but when they did away with the FFA program at our high school, my dad took the contracts that the FFA uh, students had and turned them into Utic Farms. And so I was born and raised on a farm. We had about 1,700 acres. And like most family farms, three boys uh, one boy gets the farm, the other two become educators. And so that's kind of my background. Um, also, I love seeing so many different trades over here. Uh, I'm also a love to work with my hands as well. My wife and I own um, a real estate. Uh, we have a bunch of rental properties. We do all the rehabs ourselves. Uh, if you want to check out our rehabs, uh, you can go over to g3-homes.com and see a bunch of our properties and stuff. So we're constantly, I, I believe I, I believe I'm an electrician. I believe I'm a woodworker <laughs> and, and the stuff that we do. So uh, the trades are, are near and dear to my heart. Uh, I was raised, you know, raised working on a, on a farm. You kind of, you kind of learn to do all of that uh, yourself. And then I you know my other, my other time is here giving, uh, talking about, AI, we're not talking about AI, just talking about technology and education and the time that we are in is in the time of AI. So that's where we're going to spend our time today. Uh, so we're going to dig in with this. And again, where I need you is I need you over in your AI bot. So hopefully you're either in ChatGPT, it should look something like this. This is ChatGPT on my screen. If you set up your account, uh, it's a free version. Uh, when you're down here, all you're going to do is down here at the very bottom where it says, send me a message or it says message GPT, mine does. Uh, that's all you're going to type. We're going to give these things some different prompts and see what it can do. If you're using perplexity, it should look like this. And all you're going to do is right here where it says, ask me anything. We're going to play with it. And we're going to get started here uh, with our first prompt. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, Bob is going to copy and paste that prompt over. Thank you, Bob. There you go over in the chat, or if you have a copy of these, you can just copy and paste that prompt into whichever chat bot that you are happening to use. And then you just need to fill in where there are uh, places for you to fill in. So if I take this over to perplexity, I'm just going to copy and paste this into perplexity. And I'm going to just change this where it says you are a, um, I'm looking at my thing here. Uh, let's see, you are a uh, six through eight uh, industrial tech teacher, because uh, somebody has written that over there. Uh, a lesson plan for, I'm gonna say, give it a grade level. I'm gonna say grade six. And this is a, a design class, um, industrial design. I'm going to just say uh, design. You should be filling this in for yourself that teaches, and we can look at what concept we're looking at here today. And I don't know what a concept is, if anybody wants to give me one over the chat, a lesson plan for sixth, let's see, sixth grade, I probably should put sixth grade on this, sixth grade industrial design. 
and uh, design that teaches, um, let's see, uh, let's do, uh, let's just do something like uh, planning. Let's just do something simple, industrial, uh, industrial planning. And again, you don't have to, you can just planning, uh, make an assessment that is project-based so that students can create something, list materials needed and step-by-step -step instructions to complete the task. And then I'm just gonna click the little arrow over here. Uh, you could be doing the same thing in ChatGPT. Uh, and what it's going to do really quick is what you're gonna notice here is it is going to go and it is going to make you a lesson plan. Now my lesson plan, the cool thing is my lesson plan is unique to me. Your lesson plan is unique to you. And this is where we start to understand the cool, amazing power of AI. And here's our goal. Here's what I want you to be thinking of. And this is where all these trainings that I'm doing uh, with teachers around the world right now, here's where I want your thinking to be. I need you not making lesson plans. I don't need you coming up with vocabulary lists. I need you working with your hands, working with your students. And so what I need you to do is I need you to be leveraging AI to support you. I'm not worried about kids right now. This thing, we're, we're not worried about students at this moment. I need you to leverage this for you. Because what we are finding as I am working with teachers around the world is I can save you, or I being AI, AI can save you three to five hours a week doing the work that you have to do anyway. I want you to think about that, right? The work that you have to do anyway, but you're going to do it three to five minutes fast or three to five hours faster. What would you do with an extra three to five hours in your day? How much more time could you spend working with students or creating amazing stuff? Now, here's the way we're going to leverage this, right? Hopefully you did that first one. You typed in what type of teacher, you have a skill, a concept, an objective that you're trying to meet with your kids. And here's the first rule when we're with AI right? When we're dealing with AI in our work, the goal is, is that you have to give it a minimum three prompts. This is a Jeff rule. Jeff rule with interacting with AI, it's a minimum of three prompts. Because if I look at this lesson plan, this is an okay lesson plan, right? It's an okay lesson plan. I've never come up with a great lesson plan or a good lesson plan, but that's why we have you folks. That's your job. Your job is to take a okay lesson plan and come up with a great lesson plan. If there's something you don't like about this lesson plan, you ask it to update it. If there's something that you need more information about, or you wanted to break it down into smaller parts, you just ask it to do that. And so as I go through this lesson plan, right, I might come through here and might say, um, exploration of industrial planning. Okay, I might say, okay, well, I'm just going to ask a follow up question. Notice down here, it says ask a follow up question because it wants you these things. This is not Google searching. This is not Google searching. We're asking it to create things for us. We're asking it to, to enter. Our job is to interact with it. It is our thought partner. I love thinking of it as a thought partner. And why I love doing this with you is I'm going to guess that you are just like most other CTE professionals in the skill trades that I run into that you're probably the only person that teaches welding or automotive technology or whatever it is, dental assisting at your school. You don't have a thought partner to bounce ideas off of for a great lesson plan. And now you do. And you, the more you, the more you interact with it, the better it gets. So I can even come down here where it says, ask a follow-up. I'm going to say, um, can you break down the steps for the, and I'm just going to pick the exploration of industrial planning, because that's what's on my screen. But you can do whatever, whatever it is that you want it to break down some more. And now I'm going to have my complete lesson plan in front of me. But now it's going to take that one component, and it's going to break that down into smaller steps, right? It's going to take that and it breaks it down into smaller steps for me. And now I've got you know, even some smaller steps that I could ask kids to do. So locate potential areas, claim, you know, staking and permitting, surface exploration, right? Early stage exploration, geological survey and analysis, right? It's a virtual assistant. I love thinking of it that way, right? 
It is. It's a virtual assistant. I think of it as my thought partner. I bounce ideas off this thing all day long. I love because I, much like you, am the only person in my office. I need a thought partner sometimes where I'm just like, oh, I need an idea around this skill. I need an idea. I, kids are not understanding a dovetail joint. <laughs> I'm just not, I'm having a hard time with it. Give me five ways to explain a dovetail joint to kiddos or whatever it is for you, right? Whatever it is for you. Here's another thing I like about this is once I do, and I'm going to pretend I like this, I'm going to just pretend I like this. A lot of times in education, you know, we like to use rubrics. It will actually create rubrics for me. And because I am having a conversation with it, that's what I want you to think about, right? It's a chat bot. It's made to chat with. And so because I'm having a conversation, it doesn't remember everything that I do, but it does have, it does remember within this chat session, everything that we're talking about. And so I can even ask it. One of my favorite things to ask it is uh, create a rubric or I can deal a three point rubric, a four point rubric to assess this lesson and put it in table format. And if you're looking at the screen, if it does it right, there you go. Here's my four point rubric that I can now give to students to assess. Look how fast. Do you see how fast it created a rubric, folks? This is the goal. This is what makes AI so amazing, All right? Thank you, Rebecca. I love ChatGPT. Look at that. It created a rubric. And remember this, if you don't like part of the rubric, if you don't like the creativity and innovation piece, you just ask it to swap out creativity and innovation for something else, right? And it will rewrite the rubric, like redo the rubric, take out creativity, creativity, innovation, and put in step-by-step -step instructions or whatever it is you might assess, right? So, so cool. All right, let's go on to another one. Let's try a different, let's try a different prompt. Here we go. And Bob's going to paste this over. Uh, pretty crazy tech right here. Yeah, this is unbelievable. This is the skill. Uh, this is AI prompt engineering 101. If, if you didn't know what class you signed up for today, it's AI prompt engineering 101. And hopefully some of you, it sounds like I've been playing with this. It's a pretty incredible tool. And I just need every educator to just understand that this is about you and your time. And when, why aren't we using a tool that can save me time? I'm, I, we'll worry about the kids. We'll get to the kiddos. I'm not worried about the kiddos. They're going to figure it out. I need you to understand what this is going to do for you, how this is going to free up time for you to take care of yourself. So this is one way that I thought that maybe you can use it in your classrooms. Uh, Bob, thank you, Bob, has, has copied and pasted it over there. So you can take this and throw this into your AI, but it will create a study guide for students for an upcoming test on whatever skill or concept uh, that maybe you are, you are asking them to, uh, that you wanna do an assessment about. And again, you can just copy that. And that's exactly what I've done is copy that out of the chat right there. This time I will use chat GPT. I'm gonna paste it down here. And then I'm just gonna go through this. And because I gave you the starter prompt, you just have to fill this in, create a study guide for an upcoming test on, um, and then I'm gonna say wood joints for this one. All right. For a, for a, let's see, grade level in class for a, I don't know, sixth grade woodworking class. I don't know, I pick whatever grade level. Create five multiple choice questions and three open ending questions that students can answer to show their understanding of, and I'm going to say different joints used in woodworking. And folks, I don't know how much time you spend in creating assessments or creating quizzes, quick quizzes for kids, or maybe you want students to have a study guide and all of a sudden it's going to create. And again, I, I asked it for something very small because we're limited in time today, but it doesn't have to be five multiple choice questions. It could be 10 multiple choice questions multiple choice questions. It could be three open-ended questions, or it could be seven open. It could be fill in the blank. Here's the other thing, folks. Here's the other thing you have to remember. You can also give it information and then ask it to create from it. So for example, maybe you have a vocabulary list of all of the wood joints 
that you've been studying in class or that kids have been creating and kids have been doing, you can actually go in here and you could actually redo this prompt to say, create a study guide for an upcoming test on wood joints for a sixth grade woodworking class. Here are all the joints that we have studied, copy paste. And you paste those in as part of your prompt. And when you paste them in as part of your prompt, you can then say, use this list to create 15 fill in the blank questions. Use this list to create 17 multiple choice questions. Now, here's the other really cool part of this. One of the things that makes these AIs different than anything that happens is the G part, right? This is called chat GPT. And you're going to hear a lot about all of these chatbots and all every chatbot that you play with right now is a GPT chatbot. Now, I'm not worried about the P and the T, right? Those, we don't worry about those. Those We can worry about those later. If you have questions at the end, I can tell you about the P and the T. That's not the cool part. The cool part's the G part. See, the G means generative, which means every time you ask it a question, you get a different result. So check this out. You want mind blowing. I just had it create a multiple choice test for me that has five, right? Multiple choice questions and three open questions. Great. Watch this. Create five more, please. I have a really bad problem of saying please and thank you to my AI bots. You don't have to say please and thank you to your AI bots. Uh, I just do that. I do that at my home too. I've got a bunch of Google homes and uh, I always say please and thank you to them just because someday they're going to run the world. And I want them to go, he was nice to us. He can go last. But folks, what I just did, create five more, please. It will now create five different assessments using those same joints over and over. I just created five different quizzes. So if you're worried about students copying from each other or cheating, it took me less than, check this out, it's doing it by itself. And it's gonna take me in less than a minute, I have five different options of a test to give kids. Because I don't need you spending your time creating the test. I need you out teaching kids how to make the joints, not worried about doing the test and the quizzes. You should always say, please, thank you, Blair. <laughs> I agree. You should always say please. All right. All right. So we're going to take a pause right here. We've done two prompts. I want to make sure everybody's staying with us. Bob has, has put them over there. You can go back in the chat and see those if you need those. Do you also get access to this a slide deck that they're in there too? But I want to stop here. And I'd like you over in the chat. Let's interact for a little bit over in the chat. Make sure you have that switch to everyone where it says two. Make sure it says everyone. And I'd like you to select one of these questions just so far in these first two prompts that we've played with. I call this my pliers, fires, and forklift drivers. And you feel free to steal this with your kids too. What do you experience that you want to hold on to? Is there something that you're like, I want to remember this. I can use this tomorrow in my class. Or maybe this has brought up a burning question that you have now. Or maybe you might want to help to carry the thinking forward and maybe you're already wondering, I wonder if it can do this, or I wonder if it can do that. So real quick over in the chat, could you answer one of those three questions for me? What is your pliers, fires, or forklift drivers? Two prompts in. Melissa's just going to take the uh, pliers, fires, and forklift drivers. I like that. Do that. Thank you, Tara. Ask more questions. All right. And again, my rule, and I love to give this rule to students if you're going to use it with students, but my rule is minimum of three questions, right? I'm giving you part of what this training is, is my goal is to give you starter prompts, not end prompts. Your job is to come up with the end prompts. Uh, Jeffrey's asking, what is the easiest way to export the data? The easiest way is to copy and paste it. Now, if you're in chat GPT, I'll see if they they still have this. Um, no, and ChatGPT is just a copy and paste now as well. Oh, right down here at the bottom. I don't know if you're looking at my screen in ChatGPT, they moved it. There is a little, I, I won't even know what you call this thing, like clipboard, that if I click on that clipboard, it'll click change to a check mark, then it's copied, and then I can paste it into a Google Doc or into a Word file. 
or you can just highlight it. What most teachers do is just highlight it, right? Click copy, right? Click paste. Jeff, this is Scott. There was a question about when should I use a Google search versus chat GPT? Oh, good question. Good question. So when do you use a Google search versus when do you use a chat bot? So the difference between the two is, is, and this is, I, I, this is, I love the question because I was just on another call before this. And we were talking about, this is one of our, our mental mind shifts that we have to kind of get in, get into, um, when we're dealing with AI, if you just need to find information, right? I think of research. If you're asking kids to go out and research something, if you just need to find information, that's a Google search, right? If I need to find the facts, I need to find a list. I need to find it's something I need, you know, I need to find the video that's going to show me how to do a three-way switch there. You're going to go do a Google search. If you wanted to create something, you notice these first two prompts that we've did, we asked it to create a lesson plan. It's all in the verb. This is, this is the inside trick about prompt engineering. I'm giving it to you. The inside trick about prompt engineering is it's all about the verb. AI wants to create stuff. It wants to create, it wants to compose. It composes music. I don't know if we have a music person in here. I can't remember if I saw that come through my, right? Uh, create, compose. Um, any kind of words, uh, synthesize, anything that you want to do with that. Uh, you notice in both of these first two prompts, I use the verb create. That's when you want a, to leverage AI. I want you to create a lesson plan for me. I want you to create, you can't say that to Google. If you go to Google and say, create a lesson plan for me, it just gives you search results. It doesn't actually do it. This does things. This does things. So I yeah, hope that helps. Research, yeah, yeah. go into Google, create things, use AI. Bob? Talk a little bit about responsible use. The Because um, Melissa asked, um, how can we allow kids to responsibly use chat GPT um, while at the same time learning our content, but taking responsibility for having this AI partner? Yeah, that's a really good question. And we get asked that all the time. And here's here's what we need to know, right? One of the biggest issues that that education was having or is still having, well, we're not having it. The fear is that it's there. This is the problem. There's this there's this fear that it's there. But one of the issues that we see is we're worried about quote unquote kids plagiarizing or kids cheating. Sure, this thing writes faster than any kid can write. But at the same time, the a APA and the MLA have both already come out and said, here's how you cite it. So we as a society, the APA, the MLA, the AP, any of you AP teachers, the AP has just come out and said, I saw somebody in here was AP uh, computer science, uh, Python language. The AP has come out and said, students can use this as a thought partner on the AP exams that are coming up. So our goal is in education is to teach kids to use this responsibly. And it's the same conversation we've always been having, folks. The conversation is, if you're going to use it and you're going to leverage it, then cite your source. I, I the, What I don't want to get into is I don't want kids to get into an opportunity where they're hiding it from us. I want students to say, yeah, I use ChatGPT to figure out how to do this joint. I used chat GPT or I used an AI to diagnose the problem in the engine. I use chat GPT to figure out how to put together a recipe with these seven ingredients. That's, that's cool. <laughs> All right. I, I, I want kids to, to understand that we can leverage it in responsible ways. Now, what isn't responsible? It's not responsible to copy and paste the question into the chat GPT and ask for a five paragraph essay and then copy and paste that essay back over and call it my own. That's plagiarizing. That's plagiarizing. It always has been plagiarizing. Kids were buying essays or copying off their friends or buying essays online long before chat GPT came along. And that's what I like to tell educators, right? There was plagiarism before chat GPT. There will be plagiarism after chat GPT. AI and ChatGPT did not cause plagiarism. Our goal is to create a future generation. And what I, the words I live by, 
is how are we preparing them for their future and not our past? Their future is going to be AI. So our job is to help them leverage in doing this, right? And I will tell you, and I shared this earlier, in the construct, like I do construction on our rental properties. I leverage this thing all the time. I leverage this thing to figure out how many square feet of flooring I need. I use this thing. I had a friend this summer. I had a friend I was helping him build a retaining wall. And the retaining wall was going to come off 18 inches off his house. It was going to run about <clears throat> 34 feet and then 18 inch return back to the house. And it's on a slope. Uh, at one end, it was going to be about a foot and a half high. At the other end, it was going to be about three and a half feet high as it was sloped down the hill. So we went to ChatGPT and we put in that exact idea. Give me, and we put, so we went to ChatGPT and we said, I am building a retaining wall that is 18 inches, 34 feet, 18 inches return. It is on a slope. At one end, it needs to be one and a half feet high. At the other end, it's going to be three and a half feet high. The size of brick that I'm using, landscaping brick that I'm using is, we gave it the dimension of the brick. How many bricks do I need? And it gave me the entire thought process. It gave me what it was thinking. And it was within a half a brick. And it took me less than 10 seconds. I need my contractor to use this because I don't want to be paying my contractor to time to figure that out when there's a tool that can figure it out in under 10 seconds. Right? I, I love this. Trevor uses another one, magicschool.ai. Great AI. It's using chat GPT. I like to train teachers to use ChatGPT because ChatGPT is where you learn to prompt engineer. And that's the skill. When you're using something like magicschool.ai, it's using ChatGPT in the background. I call it the mothership. Everybody's using ChatGPT. It's just pulling the data sets from ChatGPT. But what Magic AI or magicschool.ai has done is you, you'll notice inside there, it's just drop down menus, drop down menus because somebody has done the prompt engineering for you. Somebody has done the prompt engineering for you, right? So let's do with this one. Bob, if you want to copy and paste the next one over, here's prompt starter number three, if you want to keep playing here for a second. Um, I like Lori, same issue we've had with any new tech tool, from calculators, to computers, to internet. Some fear it all in the past. But folks, this is a game changer. I really do. Um, I've been around tech for a long time, and there's been things that have come and gone that I have not jumped on the bandwagon with. But I, I can see this one. There is a future here. And this is the thing I love about working with, with, with you folks, working with the skilled trades. is our, Right now, we are moving away from diplomas and we are moving back towards a skill-based hiring system. It's happening at all levels. And we need people that can work with their hands. We need people who understand how to leverage technology to do the work to work with your hands. <laughs> I need you not in front of a computer. I need you out doing stuff. So we need to make sure that when you are in front of a computer, you're leveraging that time to get back out doing the stuff that I need you to do. And that's where this, this comes in. This is an, a critical skill, right? Auto mechanics or auto technicians. I mean, I have a Tesla. I'm just thinking about what does this do when I can actually create, and this is where it's going, they're creating an AI that knows everything and all the procedures and everything to fix my Tesla, which is electric, right? Then I can go in and I can just talk to my AI and it will diagnose the car for me. And you know, this is already happening. They plug them into computers and the computer says, hey, check this, check this, check this. Here's a great one. Create a 15 question quiz for a unit on, name your unit, your outcome, your standard. You can name a tool if you're teaching kids different tools. Make three true and false questions, seven multiple choice questions and five open-ended questions that assess student understanding. Make two of the questions focused on safety because maybe we're doing a safety thing, right? I love Jerry says, one of his favorite things is for exit tickets, open-ended surveys, right? It'll summarize. I love how it summarizes things, right? I also love how it can create scenarios. One of the, my favorite things that I love to do is have students be in scenarios. And I, I thought about this as I was preparing to do this uh, with this specific group of educators. 
I was thinking, okay, I think this is a great group of educators who can leverage the idea of scenario-based learning for a project where maybe you're getting ready to go out into the shop or you're getting ready to go out on the, on the floor and you just want to have a scenario for kids to be working through or thinking through. So you can ask it to create a scenario based learning project for grade level name of course, right? And it will actually create a scenario for kids to come through and then give them some of the skills of how to use it. What do we have there? We got a, a, a I'm trying to see what that picture of is that a picture of a, some type of buffer or something that looks like I can't tell. Um, but I'm going to come over and I'm going to click a new chat and I'll do this one with you. Um, so I'm just copying and pasting this down here create a scenario based learning project for i don't know if you, if you teach multiple grades it can just be high school it doesn't have to be a specific grade so you can say high school um name of course so i'm going to say uh auto technician learning how to uh change the brake pads all right and see what it comes up with. And again, remember, remember who can remember over in the chat, what's my rule? This is your starter prompt. How many more prompts do you need to give it before you start thinking about it? All right. So this is my starter prompt where it's going to come up with me and it's going to give me the resources needed. Here's your scenario. Students are introduced to a scenario where the, uh, as junior technicians in a busy auto repair shop. Okay. So in this case, it didn't actually give me the scenario. So I'm going to ask it my next question. Remember you have to ask it at least two more times. Um, can you create the scenario for me? All right. The other thing I love is you don't have to do Cricks, the spelling has to be close enough. I'm dyslexic, which is my favorite thing, is that I, this thing, I just have to be close enough when it comes to um, when it comes to spelling, which is great for some of our kiddos, right? So here's the situation. I love this. So I asked it, can you create this scenario, right? My first prompt was to get it thinking about, about scenarios. Now I can say, can you create the scenario? Situation, a customer has just bought a 2010 Honda Civic. They've been hearing a screeching noise from the wheels. And it would give them a scenario that they can get into. Right? I've had culinary, uh, I had a culinary teacher use this uh, as a way to create a scenario where uh, uh, students were having to create a meal for a Michelin star reviewer. And so the scenario was this Michelin star reviewer just came into your, uh, you know, into your restaurant. Uh, you, you know that they like these kind of flavors and this kind of thing. What are you going to make? Right. Again, if I don't like the assessment, I ask it for a, an assessment. Right. So, so cool. Again, I can just copy and paste this over into Word or Excel. And folks, this is the cool thing about this. <clears throat> I need you to start thinking about these as thought partners, right? It's your thought partner. It's somebody to bounce ideas off of. It's not going to ever be perfect. It's never going to give you a great lesson plan. It's never going to be able to take this lesson plan and then interact with students the way that you interact with students, right? It's not going to replace teachers. This thing will not replace teachers, right? But what it does is it allows us to get 80% of the way there. So you can focus on the 20%. So you can, oh, Mike, I wonder how this would work for sub plans. That's the number one way I'm seeing teachers use it. First thing teachers think of is like, you mean this thing will make sub plans while I'm laying in bed? I can put together sub plans for today. Give the sub, like it creates the sub plan based on the standard or whatever you need. You can even then say, turn these into sub plans where you give it step-by-step -step directions and it'll break the directions down even further for a sub. Great use. Save yourself some time and energy, folks. Save yourself some time and energy. So these next two prompts, we used it to create a quiz. We talked about a scenario-based learning project. Another pliers, flyers, and forklift drivers. 
I'll stop here and give you some time over in the chat. Bob's already shared the next prompt if you want to head on with it. Give me five industries where name the skill could be used. I love this one. This is one of my favorites. I use this in every subject because, you know, we have students who come to our class and they're saying, I don't know why, why do I need to learn this skill? Or maybe you have a students who are working on skills and they really want, they're really good at something, but we're not sure what jobs those are. Give me five industries where, I don't know, uh, welding could be used. Within these five industries, give me three specific jobs as well as, well, I'm not even gonna do welding. I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna say um, floral, let, let's see. Um, I'm gonna do floral, try to really floral arranging, All right? So, and this is the cool thing. I love this with students. If we have students, if we're struggling with students that says, I don't know what I wanna do when I grow up. Fine, you don't need to know. What skills, what do you like to do? What skills do you have? What skills are we building in this class? And then we can go out and we can ask it, you know, where could you use that, right? If you know floral, I did floral arranging, event planner, weddings, corporate events, conference organizer, floral department manager, hotel event coordinators. I love that it's even giving the price range. You could even give it and say, how much does a welder with a two-year degree in underwater welding make? I love Brian. I had it planned the whole year based on carpentry projects by unit. <laughs> Made rubrics to assessment, material list for each unit. So cool. And tell me, Brian, it took you what? Like 10 minutes to make an entire year's worth of project lesson plans? I mean, how much time are we going to save ourselves? All right, two minutes. Yeah, two minutes, a whole year's worth of planning. Like Ron says for electricians, right? You could put this in here. I mean, you could say the same thing. Give me five. I, I can change this. I'm going to call well, here. I'll just copy and paste it back down. Um, give me five where uh, electrician. So if I had to do it over again, I'd be an electrician. I, I love that work, right? But I mean, this is the thing. You have kids in your class who are saying, you know, I'm just taking this because I have to, or I'm taking this because it fit into my schedule. I just, right? And so all of a sudden we say, well, look at look what this can do for you folks, right? Look what this can do for you. And I'm telling you, as somebody who works, again, with our rental properties, we're constantly hiring electricians and plumbers. I'll tell you, folks, there's some money to be made out there. You know this as well as anybody. If you've got the skill and the effort and the know-how to do that. I love this. Solar photos. What? Solar, basically solar installer. Power line technician. I mean, we're, you know, I, I, and I, I love this type of thing because no matter what the skill or trade is, we know that students, right. They kind of have a one, they only know what they know. And if, if I'm sitting here saying, okay, well, what can I do if I want to be an electrician, I can just be an electrician. Well, there's all kinds of things within being like a wind turbine technician. Come on. That'd be kind of cool. Automotive electrician, aircraft electrician. Maybe you like Marine, right? I like that, Trevor. I love teaching electrical construction until I realize they're making three times I am when they graduate. I know, it's so true, <laughs> so true, so true. So this is one of my favorites. I love to use this one with kids. This is one of my favorites to use with kids. And again, maybe it's not even something in your class, right? Maybe we're just going to have kids start start thinking about what that might be. Here's another thing I like, and I know we have. Uh, I think Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Good, good, good to see you there. Um, I think Tracy is working with Avid. If your school has something like Avid, or it takes some kind of specific note taking outline, or you use a note taking outline, you can put that in here as well. 
Um, so you can actually put in a specific note-taking outline or you can have it create a note-taking outline for students. So here's what I've asked it. And again, these are the starter prompts. Remember, this is just the start. Your job's to read the outcome and interact with it. Read the outcome and interact with it. So I'm gonna ask it to create a note-taking outline for give it a grade in a class where they will be taking notes on learning a concept, learning a tool, learning an idea, create the outline, but do not fill in the information for the students. Leave blank spaces so that students can fill in the answers themselves. At the end of the notes are three comprehension questions. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm just gonna copy this straight out of the out of the chat. I'll come over, I'll use perplexity this time. Uh, in perplexity, up here at the top left-hand corner, it just says new thread. Now, one of the things is if you don't have an account, it doesn't save it, right? So this is where you might think about hey, Jeff has sold me on this as a way to save time for myself. Now you might want to make an account. When you make an account, it saves all of your chats. If I go back to ChatGPT, which I use all the time, over here in the black to the left, you can see all of my chats of, that I've all, ever done are over here uh, in the black, all right? But if I can go to perplexity and I'm going to paste this in because it's I'll just add, use a different one. Create a note-taking outline for, let's do like uh, eighth grade, where they will be taking notes on um, the uh, notes on creating a three-way switch in uh, electrical engineering class. All right. And uh, I can click create, and now it's going to create the outline for the kids, right? It's going to leave some space for them, define what a three-way switch is, what's the purpose of a three-way switch, basic components, right? It's already, it's given them some ideas of like, here's where you're going to, what's the wiring configurations, the installation process. And again, you can do this for anything. Um Okay, so Ron, great question, Ron. Ron asks, how would you use GPT in project planning? I have students building an off-grid system on a trailer, specific in student-run project leadership and subterns. In fact, I think, did I create one that is for project? I created a budget, give you a budget form, and a safety plan. Those are our last two if you're running ahead. But Rob, we, uh, Ron, we can take that um, in a project plan. So I can ask it to actually plan out a project. Now I'm still playing with these prompts myself. Cause for example, we just bought a new, uh, we just bought a new triplex that we're getting ready and I'm trying to help it give me a project plan and trying to also help me understand how much time it will take. So I might say, uh, again, it's all about the verb that I use. So I'm going to say, create, let's see if I can see if we can do this real quick. Let's see, create a project planning um, create a project project plan for um, building an off uh, off grid system on a trailer that uses uh, I'm going to say solar power, All right? I might ask it to um, what steps um, are are needed to get started. What tools do you recommend? And how much time do you think each of the different uh, parts? of the pro of the project might take please put into a table right now i did do one the other day and i can do this next we'll see it we'll see how it does with this right it's all about this um 
So it's going to create, and I like to, when I, when I ask you to do stuff like this, Ron, I like to put it into a table so I can see kind of what it comes up with, right? Planning and design, procedure, uh, procuring materials. Um, and again, I'm not sure I'm not doing this with you, Ron. So I'm not sure if this is right, but you can kind of see what it's going to create here and how many hours it will take to do each of these. And again, again, this is my first prompt. So my next prompt might be, okay, well, if it's going to take 10 to 20 hours on planning and design, my next question might be, I could even copy this part. This is determine energy needs, select the right size of solar panels, battery storage capacity, whatever. I would maybe copy this. And my next thing would say for this paste, um, what are five things uh, I need to consider and where should I start? Right. And it's just going to break those down for me in a different, um, in a different aspect. Now, if it's something that I know more about, and again, I, I took kind of your example, and I don't know if this is exactly what you're looking for, but I did this the other day on a bathroom renovation, right? I was saying, okay, I have a bathroom renovation that needs all new fixtures. Uh, it needs new tile flooring. We're tiling, uh, three, the three walls of the bathtub. Uh, can you break down a budget and timeline of what it would take for a bathroom remodel? And it breaks it all down for me. And because I've actually remodeled bathrooms before, I will say it was pretty darn close. If anything, which I really appreciated, it probably, well, overestimated on the time based on the time that, that I know I can finish it in. Uh, it overestimated on the time a bit because I'm going to guess it knew I was going to have to run to the hardware store seven times because that's usually how my projects work. Um, but again, you just start interacting with it, right? And you get it to start thinking about planning for you or what is the planning or where do I start planning? Sometimes you can just ask it, can you help me start something? <laughs> where do I, like, if I don't know where to start in a project, where should I start? My project is creating a trailer that is off the grid. Where do I start? What's the first thing I should do? Um, might be some way that you, that you think about that as well, right? A couple more prompts here. I know we're running out of time. We might not get through these. I love this create a budget. And this is one I was kind of talking about. Uh, I think this is fun for kids to see. You can ask it to create a budget um, so that it will uh, create the budget for you in table format, name your project, see how close it is. I love even doing this to see how close it is estimating uh, hours and estimating costs. If we're talking about project management of any sort, the idea of being able to understand how to budget and starting to you know think about time and how much time that's going to take, you can even tell it if you make you know my contractor charges me sixty five dollars an hour, so create a budget for a bathroom remodel in table format. The table includes budget line, estimated hours, and estimated cost for each line item, with my contractor making sixty five dollars an hour or forty five dollars an hour or whatever is the the hourly wage in your part of town and somebody's saying sixty five dollars because I live in Seattle yeah so um, so ChatGPT three so there are different versions are basically uh, different updates that have come I am playing with you might see up here in the top right hand corner I am playing with ChatGPT four I pay twenty dollars a month because this is the work that I do I you do not need to spend twenty bucks a month on ChatGPT four. ChatGPT 3.5 is the free version of, of ChatGPT, and it is fantastic. It will do anything and everything we need to do in K-12 education. ChatGPT 3.5 got a 1600 on the SAT without even trying. It took it like 10 minutes. This thing is incredible. ChatGPT 3 is the version that is behind ChatGPT 3.5. The only really way to show you the difference, and again, it doesn't, there's not really any difference to the things that we do, um, the things that we do in, in K-12 education, you don't need to pay for it. Um, and there will always be a free version because it's open source software. But basically the difference is ChatGPT3, which was the first Vasia version that came out a year ago, it's one year, it's one year birthday was on the 10th. So we're talking about technology that's literally a year old. ChatGPT3 passed the bar exam to be a lawyer in like the lowest three or 5%. ChatGPT3.5 passed the bar to become a lawyer in the lowest 
and ChatGPT4 passed the bar to become a lawyer in the top 5%. So this is just them playing with and getting better at its responses. That being said, the thing I don't like about ChatGPT4 is it writes a lot. As you have probably noticed, if you've been playing with this, the biggest issue with this thing is it writes way too much. I spend more time saying, synthesize that, condense that, make it easier to read, change the language. I spend more time doing that than I do anything else because it loves to write. So I spend more time trying to get it to condense, get it back into the box. And the nice thing is, is chat 3.0 and chat 3.5, or 3.5, they write less than chat GBT4. So it's actually easier to get it back into the box. Um, right. Uh, I love prompt number eight. This is one of the things I, I think about a lot is if you have students who struggle with different reading levels, you have students who, you know, might be in a, in a high school class, but they're reading at a fifth grade reading level or a seventh grade reading level or whatever it might be. You can ask it to give you examples at different reading levels, folks. This gets to help you differentiate your classroom. If kids are struggling to understand something. So uh, Bob put that prompt over there. And it's one of our last prompts here is to create a, uh, create a safety plan written at a fifth grade reading level for students who will be working to name the project based on OSHA guidelines. If it's not fifth grade, it could be third grade. It could be eighth grade. It could be 10th grade. You can also take, this is something really cool that I just literally off the top of my mind came up with. Maybe you have uh, manuals that are written at a language that kids don't understand. If those manuals are digital, you can copy and paste a page of that manual into ChatGPT, just literally copy, paste, and then prompt it, rewrite this at a third grade reading level, rewrite this at a fifth grade reading level. And you can take a manual and it will rewrite it in language that a student can comprehend. Man, so many great ways to do this. And of course, the other great thing it does is it will create shopping lists for you. So if you need to run to the hardware store, you can ask it to create a shopping or materials list for tools needed for a project. For when I go shopping at, if you name your parts store or your lumber yard, or if you name it specifically, sometimes it, it will even put it in exactly where it is in the store. So you just go up and down aisles, which I love <laughs> because you know, Bob knows me all too well. I always forget the one thing. And then you're running back to the running back to the hardware store. My own personal thing, Bob, you know this. It's a it's a good project if it's less than three trips to the hardware store. That's how you know it's been a good project. Less than three three trips. I call that a success. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Bob. What do you think? Well, here's what I, I think. We're at uh 457 or 357 our time. Some of these people have been up a long time today and had a full day of school, but I know you said you'd hang out for another 10 minutes if if people want to hang out and ask some questions, um, but we'd just like to, we'll officially end the webinar, the, the official part of the webinar now, but um, Jeff's going to hang out for another 10 minutes. Um, please know that you're going to get a survey at the end. If you take five minutes and give us your feedback. Um, and something else that you'd like to see in the future, you know, again, we, we think we get better when we come together and we're all interested in getting better. So please give us that feedback. Um, and uh, with that, going into uh, Thanksgiving coming up, uh, have a great week. Mike Schallenberger, yeah. Our pleasure, Mike. <laughs> Well, it looks like quite a few people are hanging around. So if you have questions, just throw them in the chat. Yeah, thank you, everyone. It is an amazing tool. You know, again, my goal with this session is session, you know, you're going to be hearing more and more about it. How do you leverage it for yourself? Save yourself some time, save yourself some energy, you know, learn to leverage it for you first, and then we'll get to the kiddos, but leverage it for you first. Uh, you deserve it. You deserve a tool like this. 
Uh, do I talk to schools on this topic like staff trainings? Yes, that is what I do. Uh, that's what I just shared when we got on. I just got back not that long ago. I was in Columbus, Ohio. Before that, I was in Kansas City. I'm actually going back to Kansas City if anybody's in that area uh, in January. I'll be back in the Kansas City area on the Missouri side, I think, this time. But I I, I uh, have computer, will travel. That's my job. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking for more trainings on this kind of stuff, please do uh, reach out. Uh, my, my contact information is on the last slide of the slide deck there. You can always reach out. Uh, or if you want to bother Bob, you can bother Bob as well. He'll he'll put you, he'll put you in touch. I have to be sure of <laughs> that. That's a new question, a certificate of attendance. Um, Paul, we'll have to think about that one. We haven't done that for these before, but we'll talk about it internally as a team. Let's see if you, if you need that hour. Uh, Steven, is there an option where I could use AI for students with site issues? Yes, there is an app called, let me look it up real quick. It's called Be My Eyes. If you've not seen this, uh, this thing is crazy. Be My Eyes, it's an app. And it's very well known in the sight impaired industry. And they have now, it's so cool. They've actually partnered now with chat GPT and chat GPT is allowing them to use their AI for free and said that they always will. That if you download that app on your phone with sight impaired students, it can actually, it you can take a photo. So the example that they give, and if you go to the website, you'll see it. And if your kids aren't already using it, if you have kids who are who have uh, sight impairments, this this app is incredible. the the uh, the re the thing that they show over on the website is kids can like you can take a photo of your fridge, and it will tell you everything that's in the fridge. Like it recognizes things inside the fridge, and then will read them back to you wow. in the app. So it'll read back to you. This is, it's unbelievable. And that's just the start. Um, there is in the uh, app, if you have the app on your phone, ChatGPT app on your phone, it will actually read out responses to you. Um, so if you have students who are sight impaired that way, and you can click a microphone and read into it. So you can read into it and it will read responses back. Um, but yeah, that be my eyes. It was in the news the other day because it's, I mean, and again, it's, this stuff's only a year old. And so where it's already being leveraged that way, I think is incredible. The way that I am seeing it help and support kids who, like I mentioned, I'm dyslexic to be able to have opportunities like this, where writing is not my strong suit. You know, I work better with my hands than I do reading things and writing things that I get to leverage a tool like this to do the writing and support me in my work is, is a game changer for kiddos. Or I love the idea that if you have a student who's reading at a, at a reading level and they can't understand the manual, you can copy and paste that manual in and say, bring the reading level down to third grade, fifth grade, seventh grade, whatever it is. So I comprehend it. I just need kids to comprehend the information that I'm giving game changer. Yeah. And let me know how it goes because uh, yeah, work with him in the app and see how that, see how that goes, because it is, it's pretty incredible. And I've heard from a couple people that it's like game changing. Um, even the, even the, uh, chat GPT app for your phone, it does, it does unbelievable things. So there's a, there's a video out there that somebody, when it first came out that you can take a picture of it, things and it will tell you what's inside the photo. Somebody took a picture of, and Bob, you, I, depending on where you live, you, I don't know if this happens everywhere, but you know, in Seattle, you pull up to a parking spot on the street and there's like seven signs that say you can park here between this time and that time, but unloading times are this time and this time. And if you are here between this time and this time, you have to pay $5, you know, I mean, there's like eight signs telling you where their parking rules are. So what you can do with chat GBT is you take a picture of all the signs and then you just ask chat GBT, can I park here now? And it'll read all the signs and then say yes or no. <laughs> I'm just thinking, how incredible is this? Yeah. It's unbelievable. Think of it as your thought partner. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, another podcaster. Yeah. 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 Matter of fact, I think they're speaking to Tay Kang on Wednesday of this week. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. I'm a podcaster too, Ron. So my podcast is shifting schools out there. Cool. I just love to see when people get to use it, you know? Yeah. Um, Corey is saying, can it make a PowerPoint for you? Yes, there's an AI for that, Corey. Um, 
you know how I, I, I like to say this is a time and place where we used to say, you know, when the phone came out, we used to say there's an app for that. We now just say there is an AI, there's an AI for that. This might be one of my favorite ones, Corey. I just put it over there in the chat for you. Um, this thing, you just be prepared when you go to this. Actually, let me share my screen because this is this is for the 38 of you that hung out. This is pretty stupid. Um, stupid in a good way. So this is called Diffit. Uh, let me log into my account because if I log in real quick, you get to just see it's a free account, doesn't cost anything. I'm gonna log in. It will do literally anything. You can take an article or a video, any text. So if you already have text or an excerpt of something that you want, you can upload a PDF. But I'm going to go to literally anything, and I'm going to type in Bob. Give me, give me a skill, Bob. You were, you were. Give me a skill. Uh, a, I, I want to design a floor plan. Design a. A, floor plan for a, a tiny home. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, for a right? 440 and, foot plan. Yeah. And I love it. So we're going to, yeah, for a, let's do a 40 foot. I don't know. What do you want? No, well, no, for a, yeah, for a, a 20 foot tiny home. 20, 20 foot, foot by eight and a half. To what? Tiny home. Great. Yeah, sure. We can choose the appropriate reading level. I always like to choose a reading level that's kind of below my kiddos. So you were high school, Bob, I'll use you as an example. I might change this. I might say sixth grade reading level. It doesn't really matter. I just want kids to be able to access it. Now watch this. I'm going to click generate resource. No hands, folks. No hands. Look what's going to happen here. It's going to take just a little bit of time. And this thing is going to basically produce Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Forms. It's going to give me some adaptive reading. Uh, that I might be able to do. And again, I did something very basic. You would do, you would put in way more prompting, right? I'm just doing a quick prompt. It's going to give me a summary. It's going to give me key vocabulary to use as I think about this. It's going to give me multiple choice questions. <laughs> it's going to give me short answers and long answers. So it puts all of this here for me. Oh, notice the translate button. If you have students that, do, that speak other languages besides English as the first language, but this is, this is the cool part up here at the top is this export and share button. When I click on that, it will actually create printable documents or it will create an entire text um, an analysis workbook. So I click on this and it's now going to open in slides and it's going to create, I have to tell it what Google account I want. And it will create an entire PowerPoint <laughs> for the students to work through to keep their information on. And all I'm doing is clicking my mouse button, right? Thanks, Ron, for sharing my podcast. And it's going to literally create an entire PowerPoint that I could give to kids. I can one click share to Google Classroom, or I say open in Google Slides. Here are the directions for the kids. Here are the, here's the reading note with what did you notice? What did you wonder? <laughs> Here's all of the different parts of it. And again, I just did this really quick, so it's not gonna be perfect to what you need, but you can start to see how, if I would have spent a little more time doing a great prompt engineer, and again, it's using chat GPT. If I'd have given it a really good prompt, I get a really good output, but it will create entire lesson plans for you. Um, yeah, yeah it'll create yeah. entire workbooks. Well, and Glenn points out what a great way to differentiate instruction for yes. different kids in your classrooms. Yep. Wow. And you get to almost do it on the fly. You know, mm -hmm. I just love that. Talk about drawings, because when we were trying to do a, a graphic for this webinar, the uh, you created several graphics. We used a couple of AI bots, but the question comes up, can it create a uh, visual floor plan or draw? Uh, I don't I know. A visual floor plan might be good. You would have to be, I mean, I love this because you'd have to be very specific, but I could probably say, let me see. And this is if you pay, this is, I'm going to use the paid version of, uh, because I pay for it, the paid version of chat GPT, but there's a lot of these out there. I'm not sure there's one that will actually do a perfect, um, floor plan, but I'm going to ask it, create a floor plan for a bathroom that is five feet uh, by eight feet. 
um, and includes a, a bathtub, um, sink, and toilet. And let's see what see if it creates an image for us. Oh, uh, it's not going to give me an image. It's going to give me text. See, I'm not. I didn't do that. Something I I didn't I didn't say create an image. I just say create a floor plan. You need That's to share your screen, Jeff. We can't see what you're doing. Okay. Let me see. I, it's just giving me words at the moment. Let's see if it'll create an image for me. Here we go. Sorry, I forgot to share my screen. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> so I asked it, you can see, I asked it to create an image of a floor plan for a bathroom that is five feet by eight feet that includes a bathtub, sink, and toilet. And we'll see what happens. It's creating the image here. But there are a ton of these out here. And I think this is where it's going. You just think, I mean, that's not too bad. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. I mean, I don't know if I have the toilet that way, but you know, it might work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but this is the problem, right? I mean, I could even use this. And I again, I think about this. I think about this in creating stuff like this and then asking the students, this is what the AI came up with. What would you come up with? Yeah. Or what did the AI get right? What did the AI right get wrong? Like the toilet usually doesn't face that way. But I do love, like it has how much square feet or how much space is in front of the toilet, you know, and again, using it as a thought partner to get you started on things, um, I think is such a great way to use this, but I love it when it gets things wrong. And here's what I want us to stop worrying about. Is it going to get things wrong? Yes, it's going to get things wrong. But folks, I got news for you. Not everything was right on Google. <laughs> right? Not everything was right on Google either. But when it gets something wrong, like that drawing, how do I leverage that in my classroom to say, hey, what would you fix? What would you change? What did it get right? Or is the spacing correct? Like, for example, if you're going to put a toilet in, you know, you need to have three feet on either side of the toilet, whatever the standards are in your part of the world. Do I have enough space? Um, so I can pass code. So I, I love having kids to, uh, yeah. I love the challenge students to evaluate images because it's so, so key. And you start thinking about, you have kids evaluate and challenge that image that goes into reading blueprints that goes into challenging, you know, and just that close, that's a close reading strategy around images and you could have it create ah, so much fun. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, it took me like two minutes, if less than, right? Stupid. Speaking of that, we got about two more minutes or less than. Uh, to wrap up. So anyone has anything out there that they'd like to ask or continue to share? Um, yes, the free version does not do images for Brian, but there are other ones out there. I shared one called Crayon that does it. I don't know if it'll do uh, floor plans, but you can give it a go. And I'm telling you, floor plans to me sounds like a pretty easy, like I, I, I mentally, I can see that happening. If there isn't an AI that already does floor plans, folks, there's going to be one soon <laughs> that'll be custom made to create floor plans for you. But uh, I like doing that Crayon one that I shared. Uh, Melissa uh, shared uh, what teachablemachine.com. There's a ton of them out there. Uh, if you search for free image generators, AI image generators, you will you will find some. So, um, hey Bob, I just have one closing comment. Um, for those sure. who are on the call, this is Scott. I'm another education advisor. Um, obviously, most of you signed up, all of you are interested in this topic, but there's a ton of teachers who are afraid of it or not. So you will get a recording of this. So I really encourage you to have them watch the recording because if uh, you don't get ahead of it, it's going to eat you up. So talk to your peers. That would be my closing thought. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Thank you all for having me. <laughs>